Welcome to another episode of Rusted Rides. We are doing a Rust-Oleum paint job for less than 300 bucks with professional results. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. We started by stripping down the car and removing anything we didn't want to be painted the new color. There was lots of plastic cladding on this thing and it was covering the rocker panels which also needed some repair. The Pontiac Vibe was developed by GM and Toyota. The Toyota Matrix and the Pontiac Vibe are practically identical mechanically, share an interior, and only look different from the outside. The Pontiac Vibe was built at the Numi plant in Fremont, California, which is now a Tesla factory. The Vibe was produced for model years 2003 to 2010, but stopped when GM decided to scrap the Pontiac brand. God, Roy, I don't know who you are, but get off of the back of this car. Any dealer watching right now? Stop putting your names on anything you sell, please. Yeah, it's the worst. I will pay you more money, not that I ever buy new cars, but I will pay you more money to not put your sticker on my car. See ya. See ya. Okay, just gonna make, you, you need to be seen like not the camera in your hand for a change. Okay. Okay. I'm hands free. And that's because today I'm going to be asking all the questions. Sure. So Tim, why is there a Pontiac Vibe in my shop? Because this good old Toyota needs a paint job. This is, uh, this is a Pontiac Vibe 2003. Uh, it's my daily. It's good on gas. And uh, I've got my firefighter light there. It gets me where I need to go. Um, it starts when I turn the key. So that's a bonus. And it's really cheap both on fuel and uh, when I bought it. It needs a little bit of love though. So as you can see here, it's a bit of rust over the windshield. We don't want that. Um, there's a few dings and stuff, nothing major. Um, I got a little bit of rot down here behind this wheel. Yeah, that's gonna be my job. Yep. <laughs> a little bit of rot over here in front of this wheel. Your job is again. And then the, the nuts that hold the door handles on rusted and created this like rust staining situation. So we're gonna fix that. But I mean. Hey, stop finding jobs for me. <laughs> yeah, no. But you know what? After we wash the car before bringing it in here, it's like, dang, it looks, looks pretty good. Same thing on this side. It's just, uh, it's not that bad right here actually. But just again, a little, bit of, a little bit of crunch there. The good thing about this though, to make your job easy, is that all of this is covered with cl cladding. So you just have to, like you don't even have to make it look good. Just, you know take off whenever yeah, it needs yeah. to be taken off, put on new. We gotta live up to our name. Um, so this, and, and no offense, it's, it's not a very cool car. So what's the significance of uh, videotaping this project? Why is well, it in here? Well, other than it needing a bit of paint, like it needs a bit of repair. So I wanted to touch that up, but if I'm gonna be touching that up, I might as well change the color to something I like more make this car cooler and more fun to drive just because it looks better. And if we're gonna make it look better and make it more fun to drive, but we don't wanna spend a lot of money on it because it's only like a $2,000 Pontiac Vibe. So we're gonna do a rust paint job. And I know just how to do it. Okay, so I don't want my car to look like somebody just rattle canned a wheelbarrow. So how do I get a nice automotive finish with a cheap paint? Well, come here and look at this. This is Transtar. And as you can see, it's $182 a quart. And, you know, we usually you see us using Nason. It's probably about the same. And if you buy a quart of this, this is like 16 bucks. And for you Americans, it is Rust-Oleum. Rust -Oleum. So we just, we just do, call it Trem Clyde in Canada. Yeah, <laughs> Trem Clyde in Canada or whatever. So yeah, we're gonna use the cheap paint as our base coat, and then we're gonna spray over it with real automotive clear coat. 
Nice. And this is a cost-efficient brand. It's, uh, I think I paid $147 for the whole kit. Amazing. Hardener, you got to spray it out of a gun. You're saying with those products, we can get like what, under $300 for materials to paint this car? Yeah, hopefully. Okay, all right. Well, I guess we still have to do the work though. So we should probably get to some yeah. scuffing and some welding. Yep, I'm gonna get to work. All right. Yeah, now you're learning. <laughs> get that claw hammer going. Gee, uh, look at this butcher. <laughs> oh, for the love of Jesus, he's over here with a claw hammer too. Oh, I got sight cutters and screwdriver too. Okay, I'm out of here. Cam got to work patching the rocker panels while I started sanding down the rest of the car. Cam's girlfriend Maddie was nice enough to jump in and help out, which really helped speed things up. So this here is something we got to work on that can be kind of tricky because it's right up by the windshield. Um, I think, fingers crossed, it hasn't reached too far in that we're going to have to pull the windshield. It's only 21 years old and it's already gaining a receding hairline. <laughs> so we're going to separate this gasket. It might be easier to start on this side here. We separate that gasket from the window and the body. I'm gonna get you to hold this piece of metal while I get your grinder and take some of this dandruff off. All right, I'm going to need your opinion on something, so keep watching. I ask a question later in the video and I want your feedback. How come we're, uh, we got multiple colors of blue here and we're gonna start mixing together? Well, because this blue is just a little bit too light. I mean, hey, I, I do like it, but I want to go for that like voodoo blue that you see on like the Toyota Tacomas or even like the FJ. Um, so we got light blue, we got dark blue. We're going to put those in there and we're going to add a little bit of dark blue, just a little bit at a time until we get the color that we want. Okay, this should be fun. Look at all that paint for that little car. All right, so how we mix it is very, now that we've darkened up the paint and it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna, the car's not gonna look like a Teletubby. So I don't use Varsol or mineral spirits or in some, I've seen people use gas and I strongly advise not mixing paint with gasoline. But yeah, I just use a good quality reducer like you use with any automotive paint. And you're gonna mix it 50-50. Jesus, and there's the rest of that container. <laughs> Hopefully we have a little more. We didn't oh, quite get to 50. This might be the whole car actually right here. More on this one. We got another gallon up there. Beauty. We'll bring it just above that one. And that's, yeah, that's, right there. That's 50-50. Just a little bit of hardener in it. You don't want to use activator because with oil-based paint, there's nothing to activate in it. Don't trounce it just a little bit. Just to make sure it hardens enough that we can get the clear on it tomorrow. I'm really excited to make this car blue. Although now it's like foggy silver. It's like, oh, it looks kind of neat. Looks more aggressive when it's taped off and stripped down. It was really cool seeing the blue spray out on the car. It was finally starting to look the way I wanted it to. I have wanted to paint this car blue since the day I got it. 
The Vibe was offered in a bunch of different colors and did have navy blue and a more electric blue, but they didn't have Rust-Oleum. You might notice that we're not painting the door jams. This is just a daily driver for me and needs to be a daily driver paint job, and I'm not concerned with the door jams because it's already silver. And if it was silver, black, or white, I wouldn't bother with it, but if it was like red or green, I probably would definitely make that change. I also forgot to lay out that middle of the door plastic trim, so that didn't get painted. So I will do it another time, it just won't make it into this video. Okay, we're outside. You can't really see us, but yeah, we're uh, we're just gonna let that sit for about ten minutes. That's just the first coat. People uh, they try to do it in one heavy coat, and yeah. it ends up running and looking awful. So we just did. That's the tack coat. I let it sit for ten minutes. We got the heat cranked in there, and we're gonna go back in. And uh, I'm confident that it should only need two coat. Is there an animal out here? <laughs> something just something just like fell off the charger. I feel like I'm sure we can't see. I don't know where I'm looking, but, when I, but something was over by the charger. Huh. Anyway, uh, back, um, in, back in ten minutes. Yeah, exactly. Second coat. it's the next day and I like to let the, the paint dry overnight before I do the clear coat just because I've tried it same day and did not have good results and Tim's out at a fire call today so I gotta find a camera guy before I put this clear on oh look at this I think I just found my cameraman Put that down, get in here. Right. With Dusty working the camera, Cam sprayed three coats of clear on the Vibe. It really gave the paint job more depth and will help protect the paint from sun damage and fading. All right, so I am now at the shop. I haven't been in yet. I got my microphone on though, so I'm prepped and ready to go inside and react to the car. Cause it looked good when I left, when we painted it, but can't put on some clear coat. So let's go take a look. Hey, hey. What's going on? Dude, this looks so good. This Ooh. looks so good. Oh man. Ooh. All right, I'll get up. I am excited about this. Yeah, it looks a lot better with the clear on it, eh? Yeah, it does. Not bad for, uh, I guess, paint you use on your wheelbarrow or your lawnmower. Yeah, so I think, okay, and we were adding it up. So we only used, like we bought um, a couple quarts so we could mix it all together, but we only used about a quart's worth, which yeah. was like $34 Canadian. And then like a roll of tape, which would have been 15 bucks, some paper and a few other like things to mix. But ultimately, like probably, and the clear coat was the more expensive, it was not, it was like the most expensive thing, but that was still only like what, 150? Hmm, $99, that's my cost. It was $99 for the clear, and the activator is, was $55. So, yeah, give or take about. So like under 300 bucks, we got a beautiful paint job. This is nice. I love it. 
I can't wait to put it back together now. Got a little bit more dust in it than I like to see, but it's, it's not Well, you terrible. know what, yeah. So that's the one thing, we were actually discussing that. So there is more risk of getting dust in it because the, the, the uh, trim clad stays, or the rust oleum stays sticky for longer. But ultimately this is pretty amazing. And once I give it like a, a wash and kind of just denib this thing, it's gonna be perfect. <laughs> let's put some stuff back on. Yeah, let's start uh, demasking and get ready to make this thing look good again. <laughs> what do you think, life? I actually think it looks really good. You know, when you said you were going to paint it, I wasn't sure, but the color's pretty awesome. Yeah? You uh, going to be happy to drive this when you need to borrow my car? I think we'll definitely feel a lot cooler. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, <laughs> right? And then your idea with the rims that you had? Yeah, you know what, okay, we'll get into that. Once we okay. do some assembly, I'm going to get some opinions from the, from the audience, so. Oh, do a poll. Yeah. Leah was a big help getting the car unmasked, and she was right. I want your opinion on wheels for this car. I have some alloy rims that I want to powder coat, but I can't decide on color. I'm thinking about original silver, a gunmetal gray, or straight white. Let me know what you think in the comments, or if you have other color ideas. I would love to hear them. Once all the cladding was back on the car, we treated it with Cerakote Trim Restore. It was reviewed by the YouTube channel Project Farm and that's why I chose this product. It worked fantastic. all done and back together this is so cool honestly this looks awesome I'm so happy with this color this is voodoo blue I think I think we nailed it I mean we were a little nervous when we were mixing it is the audio on this I, time <laughs> it's this time okay we did this before third, third time yeah time? yeah okay. no, we did this and it didn't work no I'd say this is voodoo blue I think we pretty much nailed it it might be off by a hint but I mean come on for $300 in materials Just don't park any Toyotas or anything that have the color you wanted. Yeah, no, it's okay. I'm happy with this. I'm very happy with the uh, with the paint job. Let's give everybody a little recap on how to get this quality and the methods used to make it look this good um, for a rust oleum paint job. When you spray it, just you're using the color as a base coat and it's very important not to get on it too soon because I have had it react with the paint and want to wrinkle it up and crocodile skin it, as some may call it. And you don't want to leave it too long or you're going to have to wet sand it. And if you don't, the clear coat's going to peel off. I like to leave it at least 12 hours and get on it right as you, you're still able to leave a fingerprint in it, mm -hmm. but not too dry. And you put your first coat, put a nice, just a light coat of clear on, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then you do your two heavier coats. Flow it out as you would any normal paint job. And this, you, this is not only a professional looking result, but it's also long lasting. Yeah, that's nice, that's nice. And you know what? It like, we didn't get any runs, like you said, the heavy coats, no runs no, in this no thing. No runs. You know, a couple of dust nibs, but that's like, you know. And it changes the color too. The clear coat darkened it up. And yeah. took, it took that wagon paint look out of it and made yeah. it look like real, like an automotive professional result. Yeah, it looks so good. I'm very happy with this. 
it's very cool. And you know what, with that trimmer store stuff on there, my goodness, it looks so much better. The old faded stuff was so bad. All right, thank you very much for watching Rusted Rides. Uh, it's been a good episode, I think. Um, this is how you get a proper Rust-Oleum paint job. Yeah, and if you have any questions and uh, if you want to try this at home, just leave it in the comments and uh, one of us will get back to you on that. Yeah, and uh, we will have another video next Friday. I don't know if it's going to be a charger video, uh, but we will have another cool video of some sort and the charger videos will be coming soon. So stay tuned for all that stuff and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.